stuff we can understand. Uh, but um, we don't understand people who would do this, who would um, see and be so desperate in the world that they would do this. Uh, but uh, the fact is, they are. And uh, you can call it terrorism. But remember, they think they're at war. They think they're at war. Um, um, terrorism is usually the name that the powerful get to give to the weak. Uh, uh, when you are, uh, I mean, when the PLO blows up a bus of school children in um, Israel, we get to call them terrorists. When Israel bombs a refugee camp in southern Lebanon, that's an act of war. Um, and then, and where did we get the idea that uh, it's all right if it's an act of war, but it's not all right if it's an act of terrorism? How did we get that idea? Um, it's uh, obviously a challenge for we Christians to um, be a kind of people who can say, of course, terrorism is harm, but so is war. So is war. And it's hard to tell the difference. And we Christians in America haven't been able to tell that difference for a long, long time. Uh, and it is a matter of habits that give us skills to make discrimination uh, about these kinds of things um, that um, help us begin to understand that um, we live in empire. America is an empire. Rome was an empire. Uh, when uh, the Jews of Israel um, resisted Rome in the Bar Kokhba rebellion, they were terrorists. <laughs> um, what uh, uh, empire uh, always says that it's peaceful. And the reason that it's peaceful is because it's got all the power it needs. Any change in the world uh, means we lose power as the United States of America preserving the peace of the world in which we are the top dog. Uh, status quo powers always want peace. And now these terribly desperate people have brought home to us the normality of the order we call peace war. And they've attacked. There's not, I, I need to be very clear, there's absolutely nothing in what I'm saying that would justify, legitimate these terrible actions. But our first responsibility is to understand, even understand in the extraordinary sense that we feel. And if you have, uh, if you have friends in the military, you rightly pray for them because at least one of the things that we feel, I mean, uh, one of the things that will happen 
if you're going to save some extraordinary reprisals. And uh, 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 because we got to blame somebody, and somebody's got to pay. You don't pay America on. Uh, and what you pray for with your friends in the military, uh, who will do it? Good people, decent people, is uh, you pray for their souls, and you pray for our souls who live lives of peace that other people feel like war to them. Um, this also reminds you that this Christian stuff is really about this. This is what it's really about. It's about killing and dying. Uh, we forget that in the therapeutic form of Christianity that dominate <laughs> in our culture. We think it's about giving my life meaning. Um, it's not about giving your life meaning. Uh, that may come along. But it's about being the kind of people who, in a world of war, say no. Being the kind of people in a world of war, able to say no. And we know our saying no to war won't necessarily uh, stop uh, bombings of World Trade Center. But we do know, as faithful followers of Jesus Christ, we cannot imagine anything else in such a world not being a no. And how to make that witness? And how to make that witness? Um, we're not sure. We Americans. Do. We're just not sure. Because it's too easy for us to say peace. We don't pay any prices for it. Uh, I'm a pastor. I don't pay any prices for it. Um, who knows? Um, I just say it because I think that's the way I ought to live. And somebody hopefully will keep me honest to it when push comes to shove. Uh, it's a um, uh, it's an unpleasant place to be. Uh, uh, particularly in times like this. But uh, that's where God wants us to be. In unpleasant, uh, unpleasant places in times like this. Um, it'll be very interesting to hear the prayers that are prayed this coming Sunday. They will be for the victims. And maybe for those that are victimized. But surely such prayers have got to include confessions of sin. Uh, that help us realize that we have as Christians by forces that have made us less than witnesses to the peace of the cross. I mean, think about it. I mean, what does, what does telling us to be loving in a time like this do? Um, Surely, uh, our understanding that God's love was so present in Christ that it was not accidental that he was crucified. It was not accidental that he was crucified. Uh, he challenged the very 
power and violence that uh, possessed um, the lives of those he came among. And uh, he submitted to that and triumphed, making us possible. Making us possible. Uh, what a wonderful thing he's done for us to uh, make us possible. Uh, you will feel vengeance and don't deny it. We've got to be truthful. That's the first thing. Um, you'll, I mean, what do you do? What could what you do? You might think about becoming a missionary. If you think about becoming a missionary, what's a missionary? A missionary is hostage in the country in which they belong, which they come. They're hostages. <laughs> the good thing would be a hostage. Um, I mean, the diplomatic corps, uh, I oftentimes think of as kind of hostages that, uh, that you put out there and you can't bomb that city because you kill the diplomatic corps, <laughs> maybe. Um, uh, 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 missionaries are uh, uh, hostages uh, to people with this much desperation. Uh, and it's a very frightening thing to be there. Uh, because there is no Christianity without witness. And uh, there is great witness. Uh, I'm not inclined to hold you, but I'll be glad to let you discuss at this time anything that I just said or any questions you might have um, about these terrible things. You'll be caught up in the details. The details are um, comfort, um, but the reality is right now, and the details um, um, are only. Um, People got killed. One murder is one murder too many. Um, how they did it, how the CIA missed it, how the military intelligence missed it. There will be recriminations and You begin to wonder, and, and when the recriminations start, you'll think, I want the CIA to be better than this. <laughs> and then you have to ask, is it your CIA? Um, um, uh, that you want to be better than this. Um, and if you want a better CIA, uh, then, and then you better start calling people out of your church capable of being in the CIA. And that's the way you think about it. Or you might want to think about leaving the divinity school and becoming a member of the CIA. They need bright people. Um, they need honest people. Um, if we Christians are going to have an alternative, the church is an alternative to the CIA. It's where there are no secrets. Um, and uh, that's hard. And that's part of the, that's part of the uh, challenge. <coughs> we will uh, meet on Thursday.